Welcome back to Brick by Brick. Today we're going to be going through how you can help to diversify your LEGO investing collection. So just like any investment, it's generally not best to put all of your eggs into one basket because if that investment or that LEGO set in this case doesn't do well, then you're not going to be able to make very much money obviously and it's going to make investing in LEGO a little bit harder in the future. But if you're able to spread that risk across a variety of different themes and sets in general, then you can help to mitigate some of that risk because generally most of these LEGO sets are going to go up in value, but some of them are going to go up in value much more than others. So generally, I try to diversify across various LEGO themes. The biggest theme I have invested in is the LEGO Star Wars theme. This is set number 75281, Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. It's got 248 pieces. And uh, I decided to invest in LEGO Star Wars because it was one of the first themes I invested in and since then it's just kind of kept rolling and the profits I put back into my LEGO investing business and generally I stick with LEGO Star Wars uh, but for probably about uh, probably about two-fifths of my LEGO investing collection is allocated towards uh, LEGO Star Wars but I have a couple other themes in my investing collection for example Harry Potter which is my second most invested in theme this is set number 75950. Uh, it's got 157 pieces. And I invested in Harry Potter quite a bit just because it also has such a loyal following. Star Wars, probably a bit more so, but Lego Harry Potter certainly, and Harry Potter in general, certainly has a lot of followers that are willing to buy these sets even after they retire. And they're therefore willing to pay a premium for it, which is how Lego investors can help make some profit. And then my third most invested in theme is the Lego Mario sets. So there's a pretty steep drop off from the Lego Harry Potter to Lego Mario. This represents um, about $300, $400 worth of my investment is in uh, Lego Super Mario sets. This is set number 71360, the Adventures with Mario set. And um, it's got 231 pieces, has this main Mario character that makes it so you can interact with the rest of the Mario pieces. And um, yeah, so I think this one will be a good investment. According to Brick Economy, it should be retiring soon. We'll see if that actually ends up happening. But if you're able to get these on sale, I think it could be a good addition to your investing collection. I'm not certain when it will retire, so it's a little more risky, but I'm fine holding on to these for however long it takes. So if you're able to, it could be a good addition to your investment. The other two sets that I showed already have already retired. Uh, like the Jedi Interceptor set and the Aragog Slayer set, they've both retired and I've been able to make a profit off of them, which has been great, but I wouldn't recommend starting to invest in those two sets, but just the general themes of Harry Potter and Star Wars are pretty great options to start out with when investing in LEGO. I also have a bunch of other themes in my LEGO investing collection, including the LEGO Speed Champions theme. So this is the Ferrari FH Badu. Uh, I'm probably not saying that rent right, but it's got uh, 275 pieces and it is set number 76895. So this set has done really well. It's been a pretty great investment and uh, I just decided to diversify a little bit more. Once my Lego collection got big enough for not just mostly Lego Star Wars and Lego Harry Potter, I started to branch off and buy sets from a couple other themes just to see how well they did. There are plenty of Lego Star Wars sets that have done better than this, but I decided to invest and ended up, I believe, getting three of these for my LEGO investing collection. And I'm glad I did. It's been a pretty great investment. And uh, yeah, I also just get some other themes here. I have this Lord of the Rings set, for example. And this set is uh, also just the Brickheads, the under the Brickheads theme. It's a Lord of the Rings set. I have quite a few Brickhead sets. They're great ways to kind of have little small buildable versions of famous characters from beloved franchises. And that's the case with this Lego Lord of the Rings set. It's got 384 pieces. It's set number 40631. It's got Gandalf the Grey as well as the Balrog. And if you are planning to invest in these Lego Star, or sorry, Lego Lord of the Rings battle, um, Lego Lord of the Rings Brickhead sets, then I would probably recommend investing in this one just because it's got uh, some more, more iconic characters than the others, I would, I would say. It also has this great Balrog figure, which is the main selling point for me. Um, and the only other set in Lord of the Rings that you could get aside from these Brickhead sets is the giant Rivendell one. So if you're able to afford that, it could be a good addition to your investing collection. I would really try to get that one on sale if, if you could, but 
The other LEGO Lord of the Rings sets have done incredibly well. The ones that were released during the 2010s have been amazing investments. I unfortunately don't have any of those in my investing collection, but they've been really amazing investments. So if you're able to get this set or the LEGO Rivendell set, they could both be great additions to your investing collection. I might get one or two more of these and maybe one or two other Brickhead sets from the LEGO Lord of the Rings theme, but we'll see how We'll see how this one ends up going, and I bet LEGO will make more of them. And next up, I also just have a bunch of promotional sets in my collection that I've been able to accumulate. Uh, so this is the LEGO house, home of the, home of the brick, and it's got just a bunch of cool, famous builds from LEGO, LEGO's history. And um, it's been a pretty great investment. I believe it's worth 25 ish dollars, and I was uh, thankfully just able to get this as a gift with purchase. So. Uh, pretty much able to get it for free, which is great. And if you're able to get these kind of sets for your collection, they can be a great way to kind of get a little more profit, give yourself some breathing room in case one or two sets don't end up working out well. It's always great to get these free gift with purchase sets. Sometimes it can be hard to time it right with the Lego store or on lego.com. But generally, if you're able to, I would probably recommend going on lego.com. You're more likely, in my experience at least, to get these gift with purchase sets. When you go to the store, sometimes they've run out or sometimes the store just isn't doing that promotion. So it can be a little more risky, but if you shop at lego.com, you can sometimes get these free promotional sets. I also have a bunch of other uh, kind of themes in my Lego collection, like this Everyone is Awesome set. But all in all, it's just great to diversify your LEGO investments across a variety of different sets and themes. Even if it's just one theme, you can still, and you don't have a ton of money invested in LEGO, it's still a good idea to diversify across a bunch of different sets in that theme. And if you are going to pick one of those, I would probably recommend investing in LEGO Star Wars, but LEGO Harry Potter would probably be my second choice. But each of these can be great investments, but knowing how to diversify risk is an incredibly important skill to have as an investor and as a LEGO investor. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to